Welcome, everybody, to The Christian Marauder. I have a very special guest today, Josh Peck, with us, all the way from Oklahoma in his new job at Prophecy Watchers. So welcome, Josh. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Brian. It's good well, to be with you and good to talk to you again. Yeah, it's great to be with you and see you again. I know it's been a while, but a lot of us have been going through a lot, and you've been moving and stuff, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm just glad to have you on for today because we're going to be discussing CERN and and should we be concerned? <laughs> should we be concerned about CERN, Josh? And that's where we're going to go today, folks. And I'll just open up the topic. Uh, what is CERN for our people who don't really know what CERN is? Sure. Uh, CERN is the governing body. Basically, it's a group of people uh, that decide what to do with um, the machine that's called the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, which is basically just a very large particle collider, the biggest in the world. And uh, what, what, what they're trying, on the surface, what they're trying to do is they're trying to understand the building blocks of the universe, how the universe was created, what it's made of, that, that kind of stuff. Um, it, that's just on the surface, though. Uh, underneath, there, there are some potentially concerning things. I say potentially because th there's a lot of things that uh, are said online that just really aren't, aren't true. So... Uh, there are definitely some some dark imagery, some some weird things going on. Like they have the Shiva statue that most people probably are aware of uh, out in front of their building, and and Shiva in the Indian epics is like the the creator and destroyer of the universe. So it's a it's an odd it's an odd statue to have out there. Uh, there was also a, a, a parody of a ritualistic sacrificial <laughs> murder basically uh, a few years ago. I don't believe that was an actual murder but it was a, it was a parody and in in magic circles uh you know they'll, they'll say that a parody can be just as strong as the real thing depending on what you're trying to do with it so so that that was strange and the thing is no names got released uh no, no one no one knew, knows who did it uh no one got fired for it and <laughs> so it, you know to me it's like if i was running a government agency or if i was running a company or something and some of my employees did something like that and it went online and gave my company a bad name. I mean, I, I would be firing people. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> <laughs> so for some reason, uh, no one, no one got in trouble for that. And we still don't really know what that was all about. So, you know, every, every once in a while, uh, stuff like that will, will come up. Um, but the, the, the experiment itself, the, the, the actual particle collisions themselves, um, those are, they, they technically are the same things that are happening in our atmosphere every single day. We have cosmic rays that come into our atmosphere and particle collisions like that happen all the time. So the problem isn't necessarily with the particle collision itself. It's why are they, why are they doing it for, for what reason? And um, they've been saying for years and they have not made a secret out of this, that one of their main goals is they want to use the LHC to discover and map out and, and, and like probe extra dimensions to see if extra dimensions exist and then to map them out and even potentially communicate with whatever might be living there in these extra dimensions, which, you know, and, and when, as a Christian, when we think about that, it's like, um, I, I, write, I write about this a lot in my books, uh, Quantum Creation and Cherubim Chariots, which is, if people want to pick those up, they can get it at prophecywatchers.com. That's the best place to get it. Uh, but in there, I lay out, I think, a pretty strong case that what we think of as extra dimensions is probably the spirit world, you know, heaven, hell, whatever, whatever else God created that's outside of our uh, three dimensions of, of space and one of time. So uh, that being the case, if their goal is to communicate with these entities, well, that that's essentially just I mean, that that's like that's like witchcraft. That's that, that, that's trying to communicate with spirits that aren't God. They're, they're not friendly to God, because if they were, they wouldn't be answering back, you know. Uh, like a good angel isn't going to say, oh, yeah, let me pick up the phone and talk to you, you know. Uh, <laughs> God, God might send an angel to talk to somebody, but if, if somebody's trying to, to essentially pray to these things, nothing good is going to be able to be answering. I mean, it's, it's, it's essentially like uh, it, it's, it's like a giant technological Ouija board, if they're using it for that purpose. I, I don't think there's a problem with just trying to find out what what makes up the universe and in doing it in a way where 
it, it's a naturally occurring thing anyway, like I said about cosmic rays in our atmosphere. I, I don't think that's the problem. The problem is trying to explore these spirit realms. And, you know, their science director at the time, um, Sergio Bertolucci, uh, we have a, uh, I have a quote that, that he, he was talking about how they might want to communicate with something from these extra dimensions. And he said that, uh, what might come through are unknown unknowns. Really weird, ominous language used there, but it's like it's like he's expecting uh, to get some kind of response, and he, he doesn't have any framework of what that would be. But they still want to go ahead with it anyway. And um, and there there's a variety of ways that they would send communication through. I can talk about that if you want. But that that's essentially what CERN is, and and what uh, what the science, what, just the basic version of the science. And I, I can get deeper into any of this if you want. Uh, and then kind of like what some of the the, the conspiracies around it are. Uh, okay, um, but I, I find it kind of interesting, you know, what, what CERN's doing. I know for a fact that the vast majority of scientists there are there for, they don't know anything. I mean, they're just doing their experiments, but there seems to be a cadre up top uh, that seem to know what they're doing. Yeah. And they always keep the bottom part of the so-called pyramid of people that work under them completely oblivious to do, yep. to do their bidding. And what I find as I'm reading some of the CERN literature, and since I've been studying, you know, the occult for quite a few years, and um, you just mentioned a word, and I got the, I copied the uh, top of the article. It says, research program at CERN covers topics from basic structure of matter to cosmic rays from the standard model of supersymmetry. So I read cosmic rays. I'm thinking Alice Bailey and the cosmic rays, <laughs> H. People of ASCII. I mean, I mean, I know there's conspiracies out there, but some of the language there of the upper level people who seem to know, who, who like you said, approve of these uh, rituals at CERN, and they don't fire anybody. There's mm -hmm. some type of strange connection there. So I know the occult world will mask words like cosmic rays. People use that in science. But they'll use that as well as in the occult to for initiation and uh, breakthroughs. I mean, that's a good way to put it, breakthroughs. And so this guy wants to break through and to another dimension and that's that's kind of a interesting thing because i've been noticing something and everybody's worried about april 8th and i did a video on it and i told people don't worry about it it's going to be an eclipse yeah same <laughs> I mean, it's, here <laughs> it's like a big deal you know we had them before and mm -hmm. so um but i noticed this the hadron collider and i don't remember the date i forgot to write it down what was in the end of march they start to kick up these experiments that are going to continue from the end of march all the way to october of this year of 2024 and one of them start picking up around april 8th but before that i i don't know if anybody ever noticed the weather that happened and i don't know if there's a correlation to any of this or not but i find it remarkable that a massive storm hit england from the april uh, 2nd or whatever up to april 8th there and it was like a hurricane hit it and all every part of uh england was hit you had 10 10 meter high waves crashing into uh, the sea heavy winds all that stuff and then south africa had the same thing there were strange storms in china where I live, we had strong winds, we had snow hit the mountains all of a sudden. Uh, it's unusual for, you know, it's not unusual for where I, I live, but the other places where it's unusual, we had exceedingly strong winds. And strong winds whipped through Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Georgia recently, too. Um, it seems like when they fired up this coll uh, collider, some of these weather phenomena hit. I mean, this if there's one or two, and I can pass it off as coincidence, but this is a little beyond. We had tornadoes, and tornadoes, and in, 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 I think in China, and other places in the world that you don't really hear of them. Uh, is there a possible connection to any of that, or is that I'm, just a conspiracy? Or, yeah. so, I, I'm not, uh, I, I actually I don't know enough about like weather patterns and if they could be manipulated to know because because right now, well, and there, there's also the case that. The only thing that we know that they're doing are at CERN are the things that they tell us. Um, that they, they have they have uh, waited like they've made discoveries and waited months uh, before announcing it. And you know the re the reason it, on the surface it's pretty benign. It, it's they want to make sure that the discovery is actually correct. So like 
they discovered the Higgs boson six months before they released that to the public. So, uh, but, but it, you know, it does make, does make us wonder, are there things going on there that we just don't know about? If, if, uh, if all they're doing at CERN is what we know about, I don't, I don't think that that could affect the weather in that way because we would be seeing, we would have been seeing that like every day, all the time, always because the, the cosmic rays that are coming into our atmosphere. I mean, we basically like at every area of the earth, we basically, it, it would be like, having billions of particle colliders up in the sky. So oh, yeah, uh, if, yeah. if that were the case, we should be seeing that. But that's that's if CERN is, is just doing what we think they're doing. If there if there's other things going on, you know, we would it, we would just be speculating because we, we just wouldn't know. So yeah, I mean it's it's possible, but uh, as far as the, the little that I know right now, um I, I don't I don't think there would be a connection, but it, it's it's possible. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm just, just asking the question because yeah. it, it could be unintended consequences. They don't even know what they're doing. Right. <laughs> you right. never know. I just find it kind of strange how much happened. Mm-hmm. And it just my curiosity gets stirred up. But what is I want to start experimenting and do and try to figure it out, but mm-hmm. I don't have the data to right now yeah uh, and unless they release it we, we, we will not know i don't think they're un- intentionally trying to mess with the weather but could be possibly they're doing something that um they don't know what they're doing <laughs> yeah it could be <laughs> because anyway so they're, they're talking about this uh standard model to supersymmetry what exactly is supersymmetry yeah it's uh it's it's just an idea that uh, certain particles have corresponding particles that would essentially double this. So the standard model is the particles that we know about right now and, mm-hmm. and their properties. And and it all fits together pretty well, but there are some gaps. So uh, physicists have come up with a number of theories to try to explain that. Like one of the biggest ones is dark energy and uh, dark matter. And mm-hmm. so supersymmetry fits in with that because it's it, there's an idea that when everything, well, you know, they say the Big Bang, but we would say when everything was created, uh, that... Uh, for every particle, there would be a corresponding symmetrical particle with like with like an opposite spin. And if that were the case, again, it would double. It would, and this hasn't been proven at all, but it would uh, it would double the amount of particles that we know. But uh, it would also help explain things like dark matter. And dark matter is um, just when they look at when they look at galaxies and how galaxies spin. The galaxies are spinning too fast for the gravity contained in that galaxy to hold it together. Like essentially based on how fast galaxies are spinning, galaxies should be flying apart. The the gravity that they're they're supposed to have isn't, isn't strong enough to hold everything together. So they don't know why that is, but they, they say, well, there must be some other particles or or something that's affecting gravity uh, to hold these together. And we just can't see it. So they call that dark matter. Um, And that's one of, that's one of the main things that, CERN is trying to do is discover what dark matter is. I actually have a theory about that, which is really interesting. Um, I, I don't, they haven't found any evidence of any dark matter particles. Um, but the weird thing about gravity, so gravity is one of the four like fundamental forces of the universe that, that we know about. There might be more forces, but uh, for some reason, gravity is way weaker than the other three. The other three are pretty, pretty similar. Um, and their strength, but gravity is so much weaker. And one of the big questions is, well, why is that? If there are extra dimensions, and if there is like extra dimensional creation uh, out there, this would explain it. Because uh, what's interesting about gravitons, which is the particle of gravity, is they can, uh, if if extra dimensions exist, gravitons have the, the unique capability to be able to traverse dimensions just naturally. So if you had an extra dimensional, like extra dimensional in a galaxy, um, we wouldn't see it. We wouldn't be able to interact with it at all. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have any idea it's there, but it would still affect our gravity. So I, and, and it's, it's, it's interesting because uh, when, when, uh, when you look at how much, like how much mass the earth is supposed to have, like this is a, this is kind of a clumsy way to put it, but just just for for people to understand, like the Earth weighs more than it's supposed to. Um, like it, there's more there's more mass. It affects gravity more than it's supposed to, based based on its mass. Um, and so, how how could that be possible? Well, we know in the Bible that there are things that God created that we can't see or interact with, but still exist. One of the things is, uh, you know, we're told that. Uh, hell is in the bowels of the earth. Now, I don't think that you can drill down into the earth and like find hell physically there, 
But if this is in another dimension or, or you know, we would say it's a spiritual place, that, that place could affect Earth's gravity. It would, if it, if it, even if it's outside, if it's in the Earth, but it's in another dimension, um, that could still affect the Earth's gravity, making it appear that the Earth is actually heavier. Uh, and we know there's all there's all sorts of things that God created that we don't we don't necessarily see or uh, interact with. Um, so I I think it's possible that that's what dark matter actually is. It's it's just other stuff that God created uh, that that has mass. It's it's extra dimensional and it's uh, it's affecting our our gravity and it's just part of his part of his creation, which is really cool to think about. But at the same time, with scientists trying to probe into these extra dimensions and trying to communicate with things. Oh, I should mention too, um, the way that they want to communicate with beings of extra dimensions is through gravitons. Uh, now they haven't they haven't technically discovered gravitons yet. I mean, it, it, they, they call it a hypothetical particle. It, it, it's a real particle. It has to be because every quantum field has an associated particle. So there's a gravity field. You know, it, it exists everywhere. It's just stronger in some places and weaker in other places. It's like the the electromagnetic field which is everywhere, but the, the particle of the electromagnetic field is a photon, uh, which is you know, a particle of light. So every, if there's a field, there's definitely a particle, it's just they haven't, they haven't discovered it yet. Uh, so once they do, what they want to do is, what some of them want to do, uh, and, and again, you're right when we say that like 99% of the scientists at CERN have anything to do with it. Like they, 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 don't, they don't know about the dark spiritual aspects of it. They think you're just doing science. But, what, and they've been vocal about this for years, what, what they want to do is set up, there, there was even a documentary about it uh, hosted by Brian, uh, Brian Green, a really popular uh, scientist. But what they want to do is uh, once they can isolate, once they discover gravitons and they can isolate them, they want to set up like a string of gravitons and adjust the spin of each one, essentially creating like a binary code. Okay. And that's what they would use to, um, and, and then because gra gravitons can naturally go into other dimensions, they would send that through and then set up a detector and see if a message comes back. Like that, that's how they, that's how they want to communicate. That's the scientific like process of how they want to do it. Now, again, I, I say that that's just really expensive Ouija board stuff, you know, <laughs> you may as well just get a Ouija board and do that. Cause it's, it's, it's the same, it's the same basic thing. Uh, but, but, you know, another subject too, um, you, you're talking about like the weather stuff. When we are trying to probe these extra dimensions and, and there, there was a, a, a report released that they may have actually, they may have actually accomplished this just recently. Um, when, when they're doing that, we, we know that in, in, you know, with the spirit, with the spirit world, if we're, if we're trying to communicate with something, we're, we're essentially sending out an invitation. We're inviting demons to come and mess with, with, with our lives. Now, the uh, CERN is made up of a whole bunch of different nations. I mean, it's like a, it's, it's literally a worldwide like um, effort. Uh, so it's like the entire world is is having something to do with you know s sending these these particles or these messages or these invitations out there to extra dimensions um and what's the response well it, it maybe it works the same way maybe that gives them license to you know come through and mess with our world it's possible uh so th that that thought just kind of came to me that might be that that might be what the weather is or it just might be that it's you know getting into the end times and we're going to start doing <laughs> more things like that but but yeah it's, it's, it's interesting to think about yeah it's like they are trying to it kind of reminds me of an ouija board it's like instead of yeah. doing the mind altering stuff substances or, or meditation they are uh they're trying to connect with uh, our space brothers or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> trying to connect with these interdimensional beings. Who knows? I'm just, I like to speculate and think outside the box, but maybe they know how to manipulate graviton from one dimension to another that we don't. Maybe they're yeah, trying maybe. to find out. Maybe. We don't know. But it's just interesting. I did see this uh, movie. I like these old sci-fi movies. So I watched a Doug McClure movie about Atlantis mm -hmm. and uh, go down in a diving bell at the, you know, it's like, 
1890s or whatever, and they go in a diving bell, they end up in Atlantis. And I thought, yeah, it was okay. It's kind of a cheesy movie. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, B-rated, you know, not the best <laughs> uh, <laughs> special effects. But all of a sudden, they got into Atlantis and the Atlanteans. And all of a sudden, they walk into the fifth city of Atlantis. And I'm going, I'm listening to it. I go, this is Alice Bailey. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Atlanteans live underneath the earth. And they're trying to communicate outward and manipulate people to contact them to get higher intelligence i'm going this is, it almost sounds like cern in a way i, I don't know yeah. but it just it's like wow i always i always kind of laugh when i hear stuff like that because it's like well why don't they just come up and talk to us then yeah. <laughs> why are they trying to do all this mental stuff because they say that like there's there's a city under mount shasta you know lemuria and and they, they just want you to have a higher consciousness and they want to give you these messages well come out and talk then like why don't they just come out like <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like it's like when when people say that they're they're getting like mental messages from space brothers from from aliens basically mm-hmm. it's like if they want to tell us something land your spaceship get out and talk we'll listen you know yeah, and they yeah, never yeah. do that <laughs> no because they know there's resistance i found that in yep. alice bailey's work uh, i think it's page uh, 181 or something like pdf there online pdf and this literally says those that resist or or make make them feel very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she actually said that. <laughs> yep. They make us uncomfortable and they can hold us back. <laughs> I guess who's resisting? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Christians and conservatives, anybody who doesn't want to want this stuff. Yep. So, so Well, yeah. and that, that gives them their answer for when the rapture happens too. Oh yeah. I mean that that's been that's been in, in new age stuff and, and occult stuff for decades. It's like when, when they, they've already got a story lined up. They, they say that uh, at, at some point, someday, a bunch of people are going to disappear. And it really, it's the like the uninitiated, the ones who who are resistant or whose consciousness can't be uh, heightened or enlightened. And they're, they're, they're taken off some, you know, they're, they're taken off and taken care of somewhere else. But then the people that are left, those are the, re- those are the initiated. Those are the chosen. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, then the, the, you know, the space brothers or ascended masters or whatever are going to, are going to come and enlighten everybody. And oh, so yeah. they've already got a story in place for when that happens. Oh yeah. You, you got to be enlightened by the seven cosmic rays. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, hey folks, if you don't know what we're talking about, uh, I have to enlighten you about that on some of my videos, which you can watch <laughs> on my channel. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, this is weird stuff. When I look at this and CERN and everything and, um, like the symbols the they use with Shiva, the rituals they do there, even the well, what late Tom Horn brought out, I guess you brought out too, about the uh, uh, what is it? What's the tunnel where they did the oh, ceremony? The Gothard tunnel, the, the Gothard tunnel ceremony. Tunnel ceremony. Yeah. I watched the whole thing unedited. And I'm going, oh my! I mean, <laughs> such. <laughs> you want to open up a portal, let something out. They 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 kind of let let it out of the bag what they want to connect to. Yeah. And why yeah, were all the world leaders? Yeah, why were the world leaders there yupping it up with it? You know, <laughs> <laughs> maybe they were. Maybe they they want to meditate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> connect with them. That's what it seems like. Yeah, yeah, but those rituals. I mean, they are trying to connect <laughs> with something, and you know that you came out of the New Age movement. So yeah, uh, and uh, wow. So yeah, I just find the CERN experiments to be very interesting and what they have some called a get back on topic so i wrote down here, electro week of uh mixing angles together do you what is exactly is electro week or do, do you know i i actually haven't heard that term before well, yeah, i, just, I read that in one of their articles it's a they call it electro week huh. and it's mixing of angles they have they, and they collide the collide they just all these angles twist and turn and they try to collide that's huh. how I understand it. I don't know. I read it in. I don't. I, yeah, I'll have to read that. I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with that. You go there to what they're doing and go to the physics page. It's on on there somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. I do know that uh, really recently they they did release one article, and it's it's really hard to read because they always like these physicists and scientists. It's like they speak another language, you know. I mean, yeah. and I think that that's done intentionally. I don't think it's. I mean, they are smart. I'm not saying they're not, but I don't think it's that. They're just so smart and they're so above us and we can't possibly understand any of this. I think I think a lot of them, especially the higher ups, want us to feel that way. 
uh, which is why a lot of people just don't bother with quantum physics. But hopefully in, in my books, uh, Quantum Creation and Cherubim Chariots, I, I, I'm able to show you, you can understand it. It's just, you know, you, you, you need somebody to speak plain English to you. But the concepts are not outside of the realm of, of understanding. Anybody can understand this stuff. But um, so I, I, I need to spend a little bit more time with the article. But if I'm understanding it correctly, what I read in it was that they... Uh, so for, for years, when they have particle collisions, sometimes particles like disappear or there's these gaps. And there have been theories of what, what's happening. Because when a particle collision happens, um, what what manifests out from that, that's, that's, that's actually an appropriate word for it, what manifests out from that is spread pretty evenly uh, all around. But but sometimes there's these these gaps or missing places. And there have been there have been theories of what what that is, but one of the leading theories is that these particles are escaping into other dimensions. That maybe they're they're gravitons that they haven't been able to detect yet, um, or or they might have even detected it, but just don't know it because they haven't gone through all the data. Um, like like they uh, they probably detected the Higgs boson thousands, millions of times before they actually discovered it because there's so much data to go through. Um, they even have this like open to the public because there's so much data. They need people to <laughs> they need people to help, uh, and so it's possible that they already did detect gravitons and they just they they haven't gone through that data yet. But but anyway, uh, the leading theory is that these particles are escaping into other dimensions. Well, this this article said, and I don't fully understand uh, the the process of how they reached this conclusion. And that's another thing too. Sometimes they will. And I got another example of this, but they will bury um, the, the the process or the methodology of how they came to their conclusions in all of this really technical language. So you can't make sense out of it. And then they'll come to a conclusion and then you're supposed to just believe the conclusion. So uh, I don't know if it's a case of that or if it's just I need to spend some more time with the article and really understand what they're saying. But the conclusion that they drew is there's sufficiently strong evidence to at least prove now that yes these particles are going into extra dimensions extra dimensions are real there's a there's at least a fourth dimension of space that they have uh, evidence now that that actually exists so if if that conclusion is true and i'm not saying it is or it isn't because i don't i don't know yet but if that's true then we're already here we're already at the point where uh they're able to send particles even if on accident through a collision but they're able to send particles into a higher dimension and, and that is scientifically proven that higher dimensions exist and and i say that i don't know if that conclusion is correct yet even though the article says that because years ago uh and i wrote about this i believe in quantum creation but years ago this kind of thing happened there was a theory called uh uh gravity's rainbow or, or rainbow gravity theory and what it was and I still don't understand the middle part because it, 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 there is no explanation, essentially. I, I, I searched and the, 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 I think the theory failed anyway. But, but the, the theory was if gravity affects certain wavelengths of light differently, so if it's stronger on some wavelengths ra rather than other, like if gravity is, is more strong on like, you know, a red light as opposed to like blue light, something like that, then that somehow means the universe didn't have a beginning and there's no God. <laughs> now, I don't know how they go from point A to point B like that because I've, I've read many articles on it um, and I, I couldn't make sense out of it. I, I didn't know, like, why would that mean that? Um, and, and I couldn't find anybody to explain it to me in a way that made sense. I, I emailed physicists and stuff and asked and because I got a couple physicist friends and I... I didn't really get any answer, uh, but I haven't heard anything about that in a few years. I think it was disproven. But but the reason that I brought it up uh, in, in my book is because I said, look, th this kind of stuff happens. There might be a day where you turn on the TV and they say rainbow gravity has been uh, discovered. It's true. The, the universe is infinitely old. There is no God. And the news reporters, they're not going to do their homework. They're just going to take the physicist's word for it, as will most of the world. You know, most of the world is just going to take the, the word of the, the, the physicist and uh, say, oh, well, I, I guess that, that does that. And, and I write in the book, like, so what if that happens, of course, we as Christians would just reject it. We, we, would, just, we would just say, no, that, 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 must, that must all be garbage. 
And what I was saying in the, in the book is, is like, well, that doesn't mean that, you know, just because their conclusion is that, that doesn't mean that the theory is wrong. Gravity might affect light differently. I don't know. Uh, but if it does, why does that have to mean that there's no God and the universe is infinitely old? I mean, it, it's, it's actually been scientifically proven that the, the universe is not infinitely old. It can't be. Uh, it, it's impossible. Infinity in our three dimensions of space and one of time is absolutely impossible. Like the universe is not infinitely big. I mean, a, a simple thought experiment is like if the universe were infinitely large, what percentage of the universe are we occupying? Like, let's say, you know, what one percent of infinity? Well, what's that? That's infinity. When we know that's not true, like our solar system yeah. isn't infinitely big, you can't have a percentage of infinity. So you, you it, it's just illogical. The whole concept of infinity just doesn't, it, it just doesn't apply to stuff like that. Um, so, so there's a lot of times that physicists will come up, or scientists in general. Uh, will come up with a conclusion that they like, and then they try to they try to make the 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 science fit with that. Like like when you get a uh, when you get a physicist who's a new ager, you, you'll get this a lot. Like they'll 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 say any quantum anything means this. You know they they say that the the double slit experiment you know proves that you can manipulate your own reality and you have control over what happens. And no, you don't. Like, if the car's coming at you, you're still going to get hit by the car, you know? Yeah. Um, you, 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 don't, you can't control things like that. You, you, you might be able like, and that, that the double slit experiment is a whole different thing. It just basically says if you're, uh, if you're observing a particle, it's a particle. If you're not observing it, it's a wave. So it behaves differently depending if you're observing it or not. And it is weird. It's definitely weird. I don't really know why that's the case. But uh, one theory is just uh, a really simple one, and it's probably this. But if you're observing something, uh, you're adding light to it. So you're adding particles to it. You're adding a detector, which is a whole clump of particles, you, you know, and you're adding it. So in a sense, you're tainting the experiment. It could just be that. Uh, but even if it's not, you can't will the particle to behave as a wave or a particle it's just if you it doesn't even have to be you observing it, it could just be a machine so if we can you know based on that if we can emulate our reality well machines would be able to also when they don't it's it, so new agers will will they really like their conclusions and they like to try to you know back end all of the science onto that and then say that you know see so this is why this is so that, that's why I say in my book, there's a big difference between observation and interpretation. Observation is, is the actual science. Like if rainbow gravity were true, we observe gravity affects different wavelengths, you know, fine. Interpretation is what does it mean? Uh, so the physicist or whoever wrote that article saying that means that the universe is infinitely old and that there's no God. Well, that's an interpretation. It, 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 there's no reason that it would have to mean that. And I tried, like I said, really hard to, to read through and, and and figure out how they got from point A to point B, and there's nothing. There's no explanation anywhere about it. I think it was just somebody's got a grudge against God, and they want to use science to disprove God. And they thought, well, rainbow gravity theory. Let's see, let's throw that to the wall and see if it sticks. So we see that kind of stuff a lot. Of <laughs> Why do they call it rainbow gravity? But we can't go there. <laughs> can't go there. <laughs> <laughs> there must be a reason for it yeah they yeah but if they disprove god they disprove uh their the occult's idea anyway <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah it's do. weird they 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 want to get rid of god but they uh like like occultists and stuff they, they want to get rid of god but they want to keep all of their weird spiritual dark you know like yeah. all that and then the new agers with ascended masters and stuff like it's like somebody had to Somebody or something had to create all of that, and it, it, it couldn't have been an unconscious force because how could unconsciousness bring consciousness? So it had to have been, you know, a being with a will and a consciousness. And, and it's just no matter what way you look at it, it it always goes right back to God. God is real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it sounds like to me, they are uh, <laughs> they sound pretty gnostic to me. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, it's like wow, you know, you're trying to. Well, you're going to get rid of the demiurge, I guess, and, yep. <laughs> and so that Lucifer's light will be worshipped, and you can gel with Lucifer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's well, crazy. <laughs> it is, it is crazy stuff. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, 
Um, this brings up another point. I know people can make the connection, but singularity. Could you try to explain what singularity is? And I read a definition I got out of the dictionary and also have the occult definition of singularity, too. But it's what are they trying to do with the singularity? Well, in simple terms that people can understand it, like me. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm sorting through their stuff, trying to go what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically, <laughs> what, what, when uh, physicists, uh, or especially astrophysicists, when they talk about a singularity, they're talking about the very beginning of the universe. Because again, they don't believe in God. M most of them don't. So, some do. Um, I've got some good friends that are Christian uh, physicists and stuff, but um, most of them uh, they they don't. So it, the singularity is the absolute like first moment in time where everything burst forth and they and they they think that it was created like that because they see the universe expanding so you know they they just they just kind of think about you know going back in time and see it contracting and eventually it every all the matter in the universe is confined to one single point which is insane but <laughs> that's yeah. that's what they that's what they believe um it would seem like the gravity in that would be so strong that it wouldn't be able to fly apart. Like what, like, so what caused that? It, it, so the whole, the whole concept, it, it's, it's a way to, it, it's, it's their attempt to explain how the universe came to be without there being a God or, or, or a creator. Uh, so what they're trying to, and this is one of the things that they're trying to do at CERN. They're trying to recreate the conditions of what they call the big bang. And that, that's, <laughs> that's what the singularity flying, you know, off into all the matter in the universe that, that they call that the, the big bang. And they're creating, they say that they're creating the, the same conditions, uh, in, in the LHC to be able to study it and see how it all works. And, and even that they're doing particle collisions. I understand that, you know, if it, it in their model of the Big Bang, there would have to be a lot of particle collisions after the, the singularity, but but they're not really recreating the conditions of the Big Bang because they're not creating a, a singularity. They're just they're just smashing particles together, and that that energy is vibrating all these other fields that are surrounding. And when you vibrate a field or when you add energy to a field, uh, that when when the energy spikes in a location, that energy spike is the particle. So it's not like like particles aren't these little tiny pieces of matter like we, we we think of them. They're actually energy spikes in quantum fields. So like when the energy spikes in a particular location in, in the electromagnetic field, that energy spike is the photon. So it's, it's it's weird to think about that. That's how the universe is put together. But but it is. And we know it is because if it if it wasn't, the LHC wouldn't work at all. Like you can't just if, if they were little bits of matter, you can't just slam like two protons together and get a completely new particle out of that. Um, but you can if, if quantum fields are real. And uh, so I get that they're doing particle collisions. And yes, there would have been a lot of, you know, in their model of the Big Bang, there would have been particle collisions, but they're not creating a singularity. I mean, that that would that would destroy that would that would destroy the world for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would. That's, a, that's how I interpreted it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it, it would take so much power. Like, I don't even think there's enough energy in the in the, the galaxy to be able to uh, do something like that. Because you, you you'd have to think about all of the matter, all all of the matter in the universe, and all of the energy and everything that the universe is compacted down to a single point. Like, it's that's not possible. Like I, I, that. that that, that that would that that would be a, a work of God, you know, for for something like that to be possible. I, and and of course, I don't believe that. I believe that what what the Bible says that God spoke everything into existence. You know, did it um, when He spoke it? Did it fly out everywhere? I have no idea the exact process. The Bible doesn't tell us, but He spoke it into existence. So this wasn't something that just happened by chance, and it's definitely not something that they can recreate in any particle collider that we that we would ever be able to build. Mm hmm. So does this connect with those teeny black holes they're trying to make or? Oh, yeah. That was another theory, too, because they said uh, another there was another theory. And I forget what this one was called, but it said that if they were able to create black holes at a lower energy level. Oh, what was the conclusion? They drew another crazy conclusion like that. It was some, it was something disproving God. Uh, and yeah. I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what it was. So, so far, luckily, they have not uh, created any black holes. Um, but that, the, that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the theory, well, well um, they, they say that if they if they ever did, the, that the math, uh, the math says that it would open and close so fast that it, like it wouldn't cause any damage. Um, 
And it's like, well, yeah. it's good that the math says that, I guess, but I still wouldn't take the chance. Yeah, I wouldn't um, either. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, but so as far as I, as far as I know, unless they're, unless they're doing it behind the scenes, we just don't know. But as far as I know, the, the goal wasn't to try to uh, create black holes. It was, we're, we'll, we're, we'll do our normal particle collisions. And if black holes happen to appear, then it proves this other thing. Um, and then, so of course, because this is what the media does, the media got a hold of that and they're like, oh, CERN is creating black holes and they want to create black holes and everything. It's like, that's not exactly it. But again, the LHC doesn't have more power than uh, what than the particle collisions that are happening in our atmosphere. So if those particle collisions did create black holes, we would have black holes in our atmosphere all the time and we don't. So it's either they don't create black holes or that they are they are only there so like for such a brief moment that they don't cause any damage or, or do anything. Uh, so lo looking at it, but, but, but again, there's, there's, there's gotta be so much stuff going on that isn't released to the public and that we don't know about. So we don't really know the full extent of everything that they're doing. Yeah. It's just when I read some, one, a couple articles on this, it's like they want to open up uh, the three spatical dimensions and uh, yeah. create into the fourth dimension through a teeny black hole or something. That's how I yeah. interpret it. I have no idea. Oh yeah, right, they, but... yeah, they very well. There's been and there's been a lot of theories like that. Like if we ever do create black holes, if we do, as far as I know, I don't think they have. But if we ever do create them, could we stabilize one and use it like a wormhole to another dimension? Yeah, and, that's so. Yeah, they've trying. always they've always had like theories and ideas like that. So if they if they ever did manage to create a black hole, they they probably would try to do something like that. Yeah. Yep. Over the uh, Temple of Apollos, right? Yep. <laughs> right yeah. into the abyss. Yep. The, yeah. The, the LHC was built over uh, an ancient Roman city called Apollyacum. They actually had to stop construction because uh, they had to let archaeologists come in and excavate these, these ruins of the city. But they venerated Apollo uh, there uh, in, in ancient times. And apparently they believed that that's where the bottomless pit was. <laughs> And so it's, yeah, and, and I, you know, I always wondered, like, why did they just decide to build the LHC on the border of two countries, you know, uh, France and Switzerland, I think, like, what an inconvenient, and they had, they had to, like, do a lot of work, because the ground wasn't really, it wasn't, it just wasn't good for that. So like, they, they really inconvenienced themselves a lot to build the LHC in this particular location. And is it just a coincidence that it happened to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, the ruins of a place that venerated apollo and was that, that they believed at least was location of the bottomless pit like i don't know it's a pretty big coincidence oh it's just it's, it's not a coincidence at all no yeah <laughs> it's, a, it's all coincidental yes yes and we're in two countries united no borders yeah yeah <laughs> all symbolism you just have to read the symbols that's right <laughs> but i mean yeah why did they do that and in revelation chapter nine hmm, comes mm -hmm. to mind it's like everybody else's it's like they couldn't be up to trying to do something really stupid, but yeah, yeah. If they end up, if they end up reaching out and extending an invitation, uh, you know, that maybe, maybe that's the the breaking point that where God allows Revelation nine to to happen. It's like, you know what? Fine, you don't want me. You want these false gods. You know, you want you want you want these extra dimensional evil entities. You got them. Let's see how well they treat you. And then you know, Revelation okay. nine. So God says, okay, here, angel, give them a key and let them have at it. Yep. <laughs> yep. Well, look what we found. <laughs> Ronald McDonald, the clown, came out and. <laughs> yep, he's gonna, exactly. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna give us humor and and save the world and save the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of those resistors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, this is some strange stuff. You never know. I mean, I know the people up top have that. Most of the others don't know a clue. The scientists and the technicians and stuff are doing their job. I did hear. Uh, some people work there. They they encountered some strange things there. Do you know anything about that? Like I've, I've, things I, moving I around anything. on their table and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anything specifically, but I've heard I've heard uh, rumors that some uh, some certain scientists anom uh, 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 anonymously. Uh, and I don't know the specific stories or what exactly happened, but apparently there was some weird stuff. But um, so I don't know what happened. And because they're anonymous, we, we don't know for sure if these are, are certain scientists or not. But I, if that is true, if there are any certain scientists out there watching that that want to come forward or, or, you know, 
even if you want, if even if you don't want to do it publicly, you can email me Josh Peck Disclosure at gmail.com. I'll be happy to talk to you. I'd have to verify that you're actually a certain scientist, but I'll, you know, I, I would keep your identity secret. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, you know, dox anybody. But, uh, but uh, so I've, I've heard kind of rumblings about it, but but nothing really too specific. Yeah, yes, I heard too. I just went, wow, you know, the things moving off the wall uh, sound like you know. Uh, I can tell uh, stories where people were possessed and I've seen things do that mm-hmm. and actual possessions, not, not fake ones, but real ones. Yeah. And uh, that kind of reminded me of what these people were seeing and they get real, like somebody's watching them to all kinds of benign little things or they see things moving around there, you know, well, it's, <laughs> it's a polyon there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why are they doing that? I don't know. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's just wow. And uh, oh yeah, I was going to ask you one more thing. The sure. uh, um, they put out that video Singularity a while back when they uh, was it 2012 or 13, whatever it was. And that was a pretty strange video. Why do you know why they would do such a peculiar video? <laughs> yeah, they keep doing stuff like that. I saw I saw little pieces of it, and I, if I this was years ago, if if I remember right. <laughs> Yeah, wow, this would have been about 12 years ago at this point. Yeah. Um, if I remember right, they were marketing it as just like like a like a piece of art or something, like some artistic thing. But then, yeah, when you watch it, and it makes you wonder, like it's it's like every couple of years, every few years, they they something gets released from CERN and it's deemed as like art or something. Uh, but when you watch it, it's just totally bizarre and dark and weird, and it, and it has all this this imagery. Well, and like you said, if you know the symbols, then you know you know what they're what they're after. And I, I but to publicly put it out there, I, I don't know what the end goal of that is. Is it just people used to the idea, or 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 what? I I, I don't know. But uh, you know, it, it, it seems a lot of times when people try to do something in secret, it always ends up coming out. You know, uh, it, it's it's like a you know like a sometimes you have like a serial killer that'll brag about his murders and stuff. It, oh, it, yeah. it, 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 I'm wondering if it's something like that, like, like, like somebody bragging about their crime. And uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know why, why they do that, but they definitely do it. I mean, uh, every few years there's something, there's something new coming out, you know, a parody of a ritualistic sacrifice yeah. or the Gothard tunnel thing. And wasn't, wasn't that thing, that ceremony like five hours long or something? I mean, yeah, it was, it was. Yeah. I watched the whole thing on video and just to see, and, oh my, so I love it's very pornographic, but <laughs> yeah. it's, you can't, it's like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I do know this about the occult world. They do things openly mm-hmm. in your face and then they try to cover it over. It's almost like mocking you. Yeah. But so I researched it and, and basically it's reminds me of Nashville. You know, mm-hmm. why is there the Temple of Athena there? Oh, it's just art. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, why do you have a, what are you, what are those uh, conjuring towers down there embedded in this park down there and all these occult symbols? Oh, nothing. You know, why is the church over there, been there, have all these Egyptian symbols in it? Oh, it's just art. Yeah. You no, know, what it is is initiation. Yeah. It's actually ceremonies to make spiritual connections so these entities can connect to people on the white right the right wavelength that's what i mean yeah and um so they get them hooked into this our connection to emotions feelings uh, it's it's initiation it's uh cosmic rays or seven seven rays of initiation it's uh <laughs> if you really want to uh get down to it it's the seven root race theory you know the seven root races divided in seven stages of initiations all initiation initiating all humanity to uh be you know into super spirit or spiritual yeah. being you know you blend dualism blend spirit with matter and then you Spirit with matter, CERN, <laughs> but <laughs> you blend it together to create this new being, a new person, a new humanity, and you get rid of the material world. It's all Gnosticism and uh, basically sat- 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 Satanism or Satanism, but yeah. it's, it's, they're always in your face about it. And that's what I saw in that symmetry thing and the Gotthard tunnel simps, uh, ceremony. I don't advise people to, to watch it, but you, if it's still available, you can probably see the whole thing. It's pretty long. You take step, stages to watch it. First part's rather boring, but um, you, uh, 
why do they do this? Well, they're trying to, they're conveying a message. They want to open up connection with the hierarchy. They want them to come back. And as Alice Bailey said in her externalization of hierarchy, in the year 2025, in all probability, will be the uh, externalization of the hierarchy, and they're coming for public expression. <laughs> And the years preceding that would be marked by a lot of chaos. And they're preparing for public expression, basically to make this switch from what I read from her, as well as other uh, more modern ones. Um, Suzanne McKenzie, I can't remember her whole name. They're trying to bring the hierarchy back to inhabit people to get them to become this new man or new woman uh the dualism this super spiritual being where your spirit rules over the over the the fleshly matter it's it's very it's very collectivist it's it's oddly i'm I'm being kind of facetious here but oddly it sounds very marxist yeah and you know and and it's funny how alice bailey in her i think problems with humanity and she talks about marxism the communism which she wants is is a spiritual communism (laughs) 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 go figure that's what they're gunning for and that's where you know just I, i look at the entire united states and the world seems to be heading that direction for some odd reason and maybe all these rituals have some connection to that. Maybe, you know, I can't prove one way or another CERN is. I know most of the scientists there are not involved in this stuff, but they um, seem to be geared up for this new collectivism, yeah. group love, <laughs> yeah. group consciousness, Christ consciousness, go, um, <laughs> all that. <laughs> and, When I watched Symmetry, that's what I came up with. I'm going, wow, they want to destroy the material world. When they did the Shiva dance there, it was really strange to watch. And and got Shiva out there, the destroyer, and bring this new spirit dimension back into, make make a new spirit world. Everybody gets back to pure spirit being, get back to nirvana, nothingness. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. It just blows my mind when I see the occult connection to a lot of the stuff from, from the symbols they use. And, and then if you bring it up, that's conspiracy talk. Well, some conspiracies are true. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, they do it out in the open. I mean, the, the stuff that we know for sure are, are all the stuff that they've shown publicly and openly. So that stuff we know isn't, isn't conspiracy. It's, it's available for anybody to see. Yeah, just go to Nashville and take a tour and go to the Athena's Temple and (laughs) have Shakespeare shake her spear at you, you know? (laughs) uh, Yeah, we're going to wrap it up here, Josh. Um, We're getting close to the end. Uh, I always like to leave this up to uh, if you have any new books, projects coming out or any anything coming up on Prophecy Watchers like you like to announce, just go ahead, give the dates, times, a new book, uh, articles, anything. Sure. Uh, yeah. So um, for those not familiar, I work at Prophecy Watchers now, which is a fantastic uh, ministry. I, I, in my opinion, it is the top of the top of the top of prophetic uh, television ministries out there. They're the real deal. Um, you, you'll get good teaching there. So the website is prophecywatchers.com uh, and you can get my books there. That is the best place to get uh, my books. Don't, don't support Amazon. They've got enough money, you know, so <laughs> support, a, support a good ministry like Prophecy Watchers. And, um, and the, the two main books that we were talking about today, a lot of the information comes from Quantum Creation and Charity of Chariots, which I believe that Prophecy Watchers has, uh, uh, ha- has those in, a, in like a book deal. It's like, a, I think it's called just like the Josh Beck package or something like that. Um, so prophecywatchers.com, you can find it there. Also, uh, if you want more videos of me, uh, my website is dailyrenegade.com. And um, and my YouTube is youtube.com slash at dailyrenegade. And uh, we we talk about a lot of stuff like this. Uh, I do a lot of interviews with people. I've got, I've got some great interviews with uh, Brian on there. Um, but uh, we, uh, we created Daily Renegade because YouTube was censoring us so much we couldn't talk about anything that we wanted to talk about. So at Daily Renegade, uh, I post my full videos there. Um, there's lots of videos to look at uh, and, and watch, and we don't have to worry about censorship. So dailyrenegade.com would love it if you'd become a member today. And, uh, those, those are the main two websites. 
Yeah, and for those of you watching on the uh, Renegade Hour, I just want to make this announcement too. Uh, I, I mentioned to Josh, I go, I don't know if this channel is going to survive because it's under watch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, whoa, it's like, you know, it's, it, this is incredible. I mean, <laughs> so if you have any videos, Josh, that you want off there, if you need any more, <laughs> get them before they, before they take that off. I don't know. I'll we'll keep it up it. as long as I can because I'm a. Uh, it's, it's, I'm going to post this video on there, but I know the viewers there are going to uh, in, enjoy hearing from you again and stuff, but they just don't understand that uh, there are some things in the background that kind of don't like things that certain people talk about. <laughs> yep. And it gets pretty hostile for some yeah. un unreal. And so anyway, yeah, I'm so glad you came on today. Yeah, and me too. This was fun. This is fun. I always enjoy talking to folks. And also, if you have any uh, guests, uh, introduce me to them. I would like yeah. to interview them too. You know, for sure. Just show, throw them my way. Uh, let them know about me. I'm going to try to get Dr. Ken Johnson back on. Just make that announcement. Oh, awesome. Uh, I got, yeah. I, I got him on once before. Trying to, I'm going to get him back. And now that things are calmed down for me with uh, my family situation because my mom died, for those of you who don't know that. And that's uh, mellowing out now. But anyway, you. I would like, I, I want to talk to him about all kinds of things. I <laughs> told Enoch to uh, the calendars, then uh, I can go on and on. But and other people I'm going to try to get back on to, trying to get Gary Wayne. I had to cancel an interview with him. I had set up to, in September. I didn't get it set up because everything happened. And get Gary Wayne back on. I know he's busy and I haven't got his second book yet. <laughs> but, <laughs> Can you get a second book on Prophecy Watchers, or do you have to order it? Do you know? Uh, for Gary Wayne's book, it's uh, the website is Genesis6Conspiracy.com, okay, okay. and he has it available there. And the the six is the number six, so Genesis number six conspiracy. Yeah, yeah, the uh, Genesis six conspiracy. Yeah, yeah, and uh, people can yeah people can get his his book there. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to try to get him back on, too. So with that, I'm glad you all came on and um, yeah. and everybody joined in today to watch this. And I'm thankful for Josh coming on and look forward to doing another talk with you sometime. Have some fun just sit and chat and talk. And Absolutely. Sounds like a plan. All right. With that, we'll see you, see you later, Josh. See ya. Okay. God bless.